Suwari Waza Randori, difficult to perform, yet something for which to strive, for doing so demonstrates a developed center. Suwari Waza, or techniques performed from a seating position, are an integral part of Aikido, one of the few modern disciplines to emphasize their use. Although Suwari Waza are not often seen in contemporary martial arts, they are still performed in Japan by schools devoted to Hoshiki no Kata, the original styles of karate, judo, and others. Nage's abdomen. Nage returns the energy by taking a half step forward and Uke falls. Uke quickly stands, aiming up with at Nage's chest. Nage catches Uke's outstretched leg and turns as if turning a steering wheel. Uke's balance is broken and he falls to the mat. Nage steps forward and applies a knee lock, followed by a Sankyo pin to the arm. Uke now is immobilized. These two demonstrations illustrate the necessity for a quick response. defender must be able to move immediately, maintain balance and awareness, and control the energy of the attack. In Aikido, Suwaiwaza training should not be neglected for the practice of these techniques can greatly enhance and accelerate a student's growth. In preparation for Suwariwaza, students must become adept at shiko, knee walking. Daily practice of shiko drill number one is recommended. The difficulty of moving from a seated position requires that the movement begin from the center. Sekatanda, the shoulders, hips, and knees must move in unison. The head and body must be aligned or the movement will be unbalanced. Repeated practice of Shika provides the basic foundation for Suwaiwaza. Practicing this drill, you should move around the mat in Shika, with your hands slightly extended in front of your body, placed lightly on top of your thighs, or folded in front of your chest. In this demonstration of an unexpected attack, Uke rises on his toes, draws his katana, and steps forward to cut Nage. Nage enters deeply toward Uke's unprotected side, avoiding the arc of the blade. In this example, Ikkyo is the chosen response to the attack. Using his center, Nage catches Uke's arm and breaks his balance. Nage applies Nikyo to disarm and control Uke. In feudal Japan, Suwaiwaza were practiced and used as routinely as standing techniques. The lifestyles of that era dictated that samurai respond effectively from seated or kneeling positions. 
The samurai live in a constant state of alertness. Failure to do so could cost life or limb. In this drill, the boken serves as a valuable training tool. The boken ensures that one's hands are always positioned together in front of the body. Cutting with the boken promotes proper alignment by coordinating the left and right sides. When making a Yoko Minuchi cut to the right, the right knee moves forward. When cutting to the left, the left knee moves forward. The force of the swing and the weight of the boken help to develop a strong center and proper balance. Moving in Shiko, it is important that you concentrate on coordinating your movement with the boken, striking while your knee is moving forward. The Yokomanuchi strike should be precise yet relaxed. A forceful cut is not the object of this exercise. Your movement should be smooth and deliberate. As your practice continues, you may increase your speed. In this example of Suwariwaza, Uke attacks and Nage reacts quickly by taking a half step back to escape the strike. Uke draws his sword and attacks again to cut Nage's neck. Nage enters deeply behind, controlling Uke's body and sword with Iri Minage. When Uke is down, Nage pins the side of his head with one knee and places the other knee under the sword arm. Now in possession of the katana, Nage is in full control. Notice that even though the katana is placed to the right side, traditionally signifying a lack of hostility, Uke nevertheless initiated an attack. Nage applies pressure on Uke's wrist to disarm him. Adding the element of rotation to Shika practice presents another opportunity for growth. In this drill, students use their hands to turn 360 degrees while moving across the mat. While learning to turn and spin, use your hands to shift your weight off your knees. This enables you to move quickly and to cover greater distances. This type of movement is used in Hanmi Hanachi training and Suariwaza Randori. It is recommended that you perform this practice often until your movement becomes smooth and fluid. Here, with his saya, the scabbard in which his katana is sheathed, Uke strikes at Nage's face. Nage responds with Ikyo, a powerful entering technique. Nage releases the scabbard and draws the sword, thereby taking control and discouraging further attack. Nage's timing and movement sweeps Uke to the floor. Agility, speed, Constant awareness and centeredness are attributes and skills required for Suwariwaza.
This drill helps students develop skills needed for practicing with multiple attackers. The same skills are needed for Irimanage Korekaeshi and other techniques that require turning motions. When performing this exercise, you should avoid shifting weight to your knees. Instead, weight should be placed on your heels. This permits quick alternating left and right turns. Your hands should be in a ready position. This is an excellent drill for learning to maintain balance while in motion. Start slowly, then work up to speed. Aikido's Kihonwaza, or basic techniques, are Suariwaza Shomanuchi Ikkyo, Nikkyo, Sankyo, and Yankyo. These techniques should be practiced repeatedly until the student can complete them with a fluid, stable motion. of these techniques, students should concentrate on the flow of the movement, focusing on the interaction and connection between nage and uke. Visualizing the movements and making them large and deliberate will help both nage and uke achieve quality through their practice. Because these are basic movements, they should be practiced slowly. It is important that all parts of the body move together as an integrated unit. Relaxed, confident posture, which indicates a strong center, is one of the goals of this training. In this demonstration of Ikkyo and Nikkyo, Nage receives the strike with her center. Notice that she does not reach forward to catch Uke's strike. This would cause Nage to lose her balance. After receiving the attack, she moves forward into Uke's center, maintaining her posture and balance. As in the previous Kihonwaza, the attack and response should be smooth and fluid.
Nage remains focused on the movement, allowing the techniques to happen naturally. Her awareness is primarily in her center. Responding in unison with Uke, she adjusts to the speed of the attack. Nage to make two turns in different directions. The first turn places Nage out of reach of the attack. The second turn places Nage safely behind Uge, where he can execute the technique. these difficult movements without losing his balance, Nage's weight should be on his heels so that his knees are free to move. This freedom allows Nage to combine the two turns into one powerful movement. Here again, for this training, the quality of the movement and the relationship between Nage and Uke are more important than the perfect execution of technique. attack and another in the opposite direction to complete the technique. As with all techniques, Nage must move from center.
response to this collar graph, Nage moves backward diagonally while making an Atemi movement toward Uke's face. Nage's striking hand moves to the inside of Uke's elbow, leading Uke downward. Nage should use his body and center to draw Uke off balance. Following three exercises help students to develop a strong foundation in Shika. The first exercise demonstrates the most basic way of moving forward in a straight line. Beginning on your toes, move your right hip and leg forward while keeping your feet underneath you. Your weight should be distributed over your knees and your feet, and it will shift back and forth between them as you move. Drop your right knee, then move forward from your left hip. Your feet should stay underneath you. Drop your left knee, and then move again from your right. When you knee walk, your feet should not separate. If they do, your weight will be transferred from knee to knee, not from knee to feet, and your movement will be stiff and awkward. Practice Shika first with your arms crossed. As you become more comfortable with this movement, vary the position of your arms. Place them on your knees, raise them in the air, or put them on your head. Each of these positions will affect your balance in different ways. second exercise, walking backwards, is difficult but can be mastered with daily practice. It is an important exercise for developing strong hip movement.
third exercise demonstrates a diagonal movement, which is useful in randori practice when attackers come from multiple directions. This exercise develops the ability to stand up and sit down while maintaining awareness of your center. Fifth exercise further strengthens legs and hips. In order to stand, you will find it necessary to transfer your partner's weight to your hips and center. If you transfer your partner's weight correctly, your shoulders will be relaxed. Starting out, it is best to work with someone light to avoid overexerting yourself. It is important for Suwari Waza that the toes and feet become accustomed to the scraping that occurs when you move from the seated position. Simply brushing them back and forth on a tatami or canvas can toughen the skin. For Suwari Waza to be smooth and stable, your feet and toes must be flexible. This exercise stretches the muscles and tendons of your feet. Begin stretching conservatively, gradually applying more pressure and extending further. The following exercises develop skills for advanced forms of Suwariwaza. This exercise helps you develop the habit of placing your weight over your heels. This frees your knees, allowing you to move quickly in one of several directions.
Exercise number nine helps develop your ability to turn in multiple directions. Start out practicing slowly with one or two turns and gradually increase the difficulty as you become more adept. Exercise number 10 utilizes an obi to ensure that your feet stay together. This keeps your feet underneath your center, allowing you to maintain balance and move quickly. This exercise involves two of the basic movements of Aikido. Itami, entering, and Tenkan, turning. The seated versions of these movements are performed in much the same way as the standing versions. position yourself correctly, you will be able to push your partner and break his balance. This exercise involves cutting with the sword in eight directions. Your hip and knee should move in unison with the sword. Swing the boken naturally, keeping the mind clear. Cut with correct form so that the motion is balanced and strong.
Kai Waza Randori is the culmination of the drills and exercises presented. During practice with multiple attacks, Nage should move assertively, avoiding preoccupation with technique. It is essential that Nage keep moving, concentrating on the position of the bouquet and their intentions. Failure to move will almost certainly result in Nage being overtaken and overwhelmed. Hanmi Hanbachi, Uke attacks from a standing position. Nage's movements are the same as in Suan Waza. In this technique, Nage compensates for the apparent disadvantage in height by moving quickly and entering deeply. Here Nage connects with Uke's arm to break his balance. of Randori, the key is for Nage to focus on movement. Quick, decisive movement is essential for success. attack with weapons, Nage's best defense is to move continually, always attempting to position himself behind an uke, using uke as shields. Begin this training carefully and slowly, and be aware that an uke with a weapon has a very long reach.
perhaps the most fundamental form of Suwariwaza. It is said that Aikido's friend, Morihe Ueshiba, began or ended each class with this exercise. discover their inner power, the power that originates in the center, the key that exists in each of us, the key that drives our practice. 